Jody and Trey for greeting us all with this various Christmas sounds that bless our lives every year. Trey is a student at Peru State College and his parents are good friends at Steve and Kelly Kennedy and we're glad that uh, he chose to be with us today. Thank you very much. We appreciate your support of our gathering today. But first, Billy will come and share with us our Advent candle ceremony.
gracious God, our Father, thank you for this gathering. Thank you for the faith in your Son that brings us together as your people. Thank you for giving us Jesus, a great light to dispel our darkness. And may we see the path you would have us travel. So illumine our days. And grant to us gathered here and all your children everywhere the hope of peace that only Christ-like love provides. Today we lift up our friends Renee and Terry Weiss, that you would bring comfort to their family circle in this season of both death and the need of healing mercies. Be the healer that you are able to be and may we accept your will in all things. We pray for Steve and Susie Morrow, fine Christians that love you and who have faced adversity with this disease in a powerful way in recent days. There are many who are in that condition, friends, loved ones, brothers and sisters in Christ. Be the great physician to them all. We thank you that we can come and sing the songs that bless our lives this season. We're grateful for the talents that Trey and Jody bring our way in a compass. And we pray a blessing upon them as they use their talents to your honor and glory. We look forward to being hospitable servants of yours next week, welcoming people that don't often worship with us, but are in seek of encouragement and forgiveness, salvation. May we introduce them to to you, the one who offers peace. And as we worship today, we continue to look upon the fruit of the Spirit, such themes as love and joy and peace. Your word has taught us that Jesus offers peace Therefore, may we double our efforts. May we increase our prayers for God's peace to come to various people in our family circles and friends this Christmas season. We pray in the name of him who is the Prince of Peace. Amen. Amen. This time, Trey is going to share with us some special music. You're welcome to say anything you want to say too, Trey. <laughs>
having me here. I'd like to thank the Denny's <laughs> for asking me to play. If you know some of these songs, sing along. <laughs> Scripture teaches us that Jesus is the Prince of Peace. In the Greek language, which the scriptures were written, peace means to join together. It pictures two opposing forces that have been separated are now being brought together or are reconciled. And that's what our peace in Jesus Christ is all about. He, we who were once in em enmity, as far as God was concerned, we were separated from him. We've been brought together by a common denominator, Jesus. And we've discovered him to be our peace. And so today's lesson and message is one about peace. And it's under the theme, how about your heart? Are you growing in your peace when it comes to life, family, friends, church people. Do you know the peace that passes human understanding? We are reminded that the Holy Spirit of God is the one who gifts us with peace. When we were united with Christ, even in our moment of conversion, in our baptism into Christ, don't forget that one of the things Peter teaches us, or I should say Luke teaches us, is that we receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And what is that gift? 
peace. I think you can tell if the Holy Spirit is indwelling you, especially when you face the difficulties that life presents, whether it's death, whether it's disputes and disagreements, whether it's in children that don't measure up to what you hope they would be, or any of the other subjects. Maybe it's the nation. Maybe it's the war periods. If there is a quietness within your soul, even in the midst of the pain and the turmoil, you can be assured peace from God's Spirit is there for you. But that peace is not only a gift from the Holy Spirit of God, it's a peace that comes from the Son of God, Jesus. This graphic is not so good when preaching, but it's a church bulletin sign that says, no Christ, no peace. And the word for no is N-O. And underneath it is another statement, no Christ, no peace. That's K-N-O-W. If you know him, there is a peace that passes human understanding that's yours. One of the best verses on peace is Isaiah 26, 3. You will keep him or her in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you. So when we keep our eyes and our minds focused on Christ, rather than the problems of life, we are strong. When Paul, the apostle, prayed for the Thessalonian Christians, he said, Now may the Lord of peace himself give you peace always in every way. That's my prayer for you today. May the Lord of peace himself give you peace in every way. Peace also comes to us through the Word of God. Yes, it comes through the Son of God and it comes through the Holy Spirit. In Psalm 119, we read, Great peace have those who love your law, and nothing causes them to stumble. Many of us read or watch the ministry of David Jeremiah on television. In one of his books he writes, of the 27 books of the New Testament, 18 begin with a greeting of peace. In each instance, he says, it is grace and peace. Note that grace is first, and then will come peace for your life not the other way around. Peace also comes to us through prayer. I've always loved this verse. Be anxious in nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Note that. Through prayer, through supplication, through thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. He will give us perfect peace. A song that's not in our hymnal, but it, has, it is in many of the, the hymnals, and I want to read it. It was written by Henry Longfellow in 1864, quite a while ago. But it's a beautiful song. I heard the bells on Christmas Day, their old familiar carols play. 
In music's sweet, their tones repeat. There's peace on earth, goodwill to men. I thought how, as the day had come, the belfries of all Christendom had rolled along the unbroken song of peace on earth, goodwill to men. Then pealed the bells more loud and deep, God is not dead, nor does he sleep, for Christ is here, his spirit near, bring peace on earth, goodwill to men. O souls amid earth's busy strife, the word of God is light and life. Hear his voice, make him your choice. Hail peace on earth, goodwill to men. Then, happy singing on your way, you, the world, will change from night to day. Your heart will feel the message real, a peace on earth, goodwill to men. Merlin Wright, whom I think all of you know, sent me a lovely article that he had on his computer about a man who was a manager of Wendy's restaurant. Merlin knew we were doing this series and he thought it just an appropriate story and I want to conclude with that story today. The article said, in 1979, I was managing a Wendy's in Port Ritchie, Florida. I was searching for someone to work three hours a day, only at lunch. I went through all my applications and most were looking for full time, or at least 20 hours per week. I found one, however, buried at the bottom of a four-inch stack that was only looking for lunch part-time. His name was Nicky. Never met him. Thought I'd give him a call and see if he could stop by for an interview. When I called, he wasn't in, but his mom said she would make sure he would be there. At the, record, at the accorded time, Nikki walked in and it was a moment when my heart went in my throat. Nikki suffered from Down syndrome. His physical appearance was a giveaway and his speech only reinforced the obvious. I was young and sheltered, had never really interacted as a professional with a developmentally disabled person. I really didn't know what to do. So I went ahead and interviewed him. He was a wonderful young man, great outlook, task focused, excited just to be alive. And for whatever reason, only God knew I hired him three hours a day, three days a week to run a grill. I let my staff know what to expect. Predictably, the crew made sure I got the message. No one wants to work with what was called in that day a retard. To this day I find that word offensive. We had a crew meeting clearing the air and got ready for Nicky's arrival. He showed up for work on time. He was so excited to be working. He stood at the time clock literally shaking with anticipation. He clocked in, started training, and believe me, he was a machine on a grill. 
Now for the fascinating part. Back in that day, there were no computer screens to work from. Every order was called by the cashier. It required concentration on the part of the production staff to get the order right. And while Nicky was training during his first shift, the sandwich maker next to him asked the grill man what was on the next sandwich. Well, Nicky just interrupted and said, single, no pickle, no onion. A few minutes later, it happened again. And it was then we discovered Nicky had a hidden and invaluable skill. He memorized everything he heard. Photographic hearing. It took three days, and every sandwich maker requested to work with Nicky. After a shift, he would join the rest of his crew family drinking Coke like it was water. It was then that they discovered another Rain Man, if you've seen that movie, trait. Nicky was a walking, talking, perpetual calendar. They would sit for hours asking him what day of the week was December 22nd, 1847. It didn't matter the year, he never missed. This uncanny trait mesmerized my crew. His mom would come in at 2 p.m. to pick him up. Four times a not, the crew would be back there with, a, with him hamming it up. And as I went to get him back, his mom said something I will never forget. Let him stay there as long as he wants. He has never been accepted anywhere like he has been here. I excused myself, dried my tears, humbled at the lesson I had just learned. Nicky had a profound impact on that store. His presence changed a lot of us. Today I believe with every fiber of my body that Nicky's hiring was no accident. God's timing was perfect. This Christmas I hope we all understand what we are celebrating, for we are all like Nicky. We each have our shortcomings. We each have our strong points. But each of us are valuable. God made us that way, and God doesn't make mistakes. Nicky certainly wasn't a mistake. He was a valuable gift that I'm forever grateful for. We're celebrating the birth of the one that leveled the playing field for all of us. Now, God doesn't care if you're rich or poor, Republican or Democrat or black or white. He doesn't care if your chromosome structure is perfect. He doesn't care what level of education you may have attained. He cares about your heart. He wants us all to love and appreciate the gift he gave us on Christmas. His Son, the Savior, our salvation. His Son was born to die for our sins, to pay our debt, to provide us a path for eternity. So this Christmas, check your hearts. Just what we've been doing the last several weeks in our messages. There's a little bit of Nicky in all of us. And I suspect there is a Nicky somewhere in your life that is looking for the chance to be embraced. Thank God for his perfect gift, Christ Jesus. A lesson we need to learn. And a piece that came to a young man's life because someone gave him an opportunity and he took advantage of it.
to Jesus troubled disciples he once said and lean on this passage please my peace I give unto you not as the world gives do I give unto you what he offers us is a peace even in the midst of COVID even in the midst of national confusion and all kinds of behavior that is wrong even in our relationships with one another even in our home life even in our business life even in our farm life even in our community life he doesn't want our hearts to be troubled he doesn't want us to be fearful and afraid so he offers us peace even in the midst of our hard times Christmas is a time when we can welcome into our own life experience the Prince of Peace